Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 90. Day Day 3093 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition day 90. And today we'll discuss a very important topic that appears on the exam, topic of normal distribution. What is the normal distribution? What does it tell us? Uh, what sort of information does it carry? And you will find the relevant material on this topic of normal distribution in three different places. I have told, I have marked here on the blackboard all of these three locations. We are on page number 298. But you should also refer to page 149 and page 313. These areas are where you will find discussion of normal distribution in the book. So let's get going. What is a normal distribution? Well, normal distribution, simple, straightforward answer to that question is that normal distribution is a natural phenomenon. It is something that we observe in nature. This is how, uh, whatever you want to call uh, to, to your liking, this is how the, the universe was created. You understand? This is how the universe was created. This is how it is. And most natural phenomenon observe this, this notion of normal distribution. Here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. Understand it from the very basic. A normal distribution is essentially a histogram. It's a histogram. We talked about histogram before. The only difference between a histogram and a normal distribution, there is no actually difference. They are, they are one and the same. But the difference lies in the fact that in a histogram, we have a very few data. For example, here's a histogram. On what do we put on the y-axis? On the y-axis, we put frequencies, of course. Frequencies. Why, are there absolute frequency or relative frequencies? We have frequencies, and here we have the values. Uh, the, the values, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that we're measuring. And here is, here is, here is a simple histogram. We had this many observations. We had this many observations of this value right here from here to here in this range. Then we had this many observations, you get the idea. And then we had this. Here, we made it symmetric on purpose. That's a histogram. Now what happens is, so what happens is that when you have more observations, I wish I had looked it up ahead of time to tell you which day we covered the word, uh, topic of histogram, but you can find it yourself. So here, say for example, I'm just gonna make something up. Let's say this is 10 and this is, let's say a six and a four. So we have four observations of values that fell between this and this value, let's say between 10 and 20. We had six observations that fell between 20 and 30. Then we had 10 observations that fell between 30 and 40. Then we had another six observations that fell between 40 and 50. And finally, we had four observations that fell between 50 and 60. There we go. Think of this in terms of score for exam. So an exam was given, an exam was given, and this is what we found. So 10, well, there is actually very, it's actually makes it very simple actually. I, I didn't design it this way. It was just a fluke. The 6 plus 4 is 10 and 10 plus 10 is 20, which means, so here we have 4, here we have 6, that's 10, that's another 10 in the middle. We have 30 students here. Well, this actually works out just fine. So listen carefully. We had 30 students and uh, 30 students took the exam and it turned out that 4 students scored between 0 and 10, 6 students scored between or rather, four students are scored between 10 and 20. It starts from here. There's a six, four students scored between 10 and 20. Six students scored between 20 and 30. 10 students scored between 30 and four, four, 20 and 30, and then for 30 and 40. Six students scored between 40 and 50 points, and four students scored so on and so forth. Do you understand? Now, what happens if we had more than 30 students? Let's say maybe we had 300 students instead of 30. Well, if you have that many students, once you have very large data set. We have a luxury of making these gaps narrower instead of from 10 to 20, maybe we can do from 10 to 15 or 10 to 12. And it begins to look like this. And what if we had what if we had a thousand observations? When we once we get to that part, we no longer have to do the range of 10 to 20. We can actually ask ourselves if 10,000 students took a certain exam, we can ask ourselves precisely how many students had a score of 20, how many students had a score of 87, how many students had a score of 88, and so forth, so forth. Now we have for each point, and it begins to look like this. Here is the 
this is this is the score that appeared most often that's also your mode because it appears most often again this is the frequency this is the frequency and these are the values now we have a large data set so what I want you to do at this point what I want you to do at this point is to turn to page number page number turn to page number 313 and 310 and you'll see how it makes from small data set to large data set how it begins to look how it begins to take the shape and then so we had this many I'm not going to put number here we had this many num this many number here with with a score of this value then it goes like this like that these are frequencies you understand for a given for a given value whatever it is that you're measuring on x axis I'm just doing it as quickly as I can but you get the idea these are all frequencies and if you like you can think of this as a narrow bar if you like it doesn't have to be it could be just one value it could be bar and as we join all these points as long as you have a large enough observations what you will find is that the most most uh, things most things that we observe in nature they are distributed like this and it takes this kind of shape voila there you go that is your normal distribution it is something that appears in nature for example for example if you if you go and measure in a school the height of the students of all the students there's a large number of body there you will see that whatever the average happens to be average height happens to be of the students you will find it's average that's the mode that's that's the observation you'll find most often there are going to be few people that's a little bit below that a few people a little bit above it and this is and once you plot it once you plot all of those values it will begin to take the shape it will begin to take the shape so what I'm going to do now is erase this thing and redraw it instead of doing this thing actually redraw not like not redraw I haven't drawn it yet let's draw a normal distribution remember the reason why people sometimes do have trouble the reason why a lot of the time students have trouble understanding is because a lot of the time the y-axis <coughs> the y-axis is not shown y-axis is not shown let's see what they show on 310 and 3 313 yeah you see in, on 313 we are given a normal distribution but they do not tell you what it is that, that they're measuring on y-axis or y-axis measures the frequency as you can see that's that's very similar to what I just erased I shouldn't have erased it but on page 313 is exactly what we just plotted a little while ago except a little bit there there is a little bit neater because I was trying to do it in a hurry and again I should not have put this thing ahead of time because now I'm constrained let me first plot it and then then we'll put the x axis let me just plot it freehand so it comes out nice and then we'll put the axis it has to be symmetric it has to look nice voila there we go this is the frequency remember even though they do not show you the frequency goes on the y-axis and here is your values since these are the frequencies this is the value that happens most often it tells you that this value whatever this, this value happens to be that happen most, uh, most often half the observations are below it half the observations are below above it which means if this observation, if this value of observation, let's, let's give, give it a number, let's say a score of 64. So, an exam was given, a score of 64, 64 appeared most often, the exam was given to say 3,000 students. And the score that appeared most often was 64. It, it, ha it happened 38 times, I'm just making up numbers, you understand? Well, if, if that score happened most times, but well, that's your mode. This score right here is the mode. Whatever this value is here, this value here is the mode. Next thing we said is that because it is symmetric, half the observations fell below it, half the people are going to score below this number, whatever this number is, and half the people are going to score above it. Well, if, that, if that's the case, this is also the median. And this is the average. It is the average because they composite each other. They composite each other because it is symmetric. It's not lopsided. So whatever values that are below this value, 
whatever power many value of observations that are below this value, exactly same number of uh, values appear above it, and they sort of cancel each other. I'm going to try it one more time. I don't like the shape of it. Yeah. Now, let's see what we can do here. At this point, I want you to turn to page number. At this point, I want you to turn to page number 149. Let's take a look at it. And what we're going to be doing on the blackboard right now is exactly what you see on page number 149. At the very bottom of page 149, they show us the normal distribution. So, yesterday we calculated, yesterday we learned the mechanics of calculating standard deviation. And we had a nice number of 3.8, whatever it was. We, knew, we know now how to calculate standard deviation. There are five steps. You follow those five steps and you can crunch out the standard deviation of any set of data. But the point is, what does the bloody thing tell us? Does it tell us anything? The answer is yes, of course it tells us a lot of things. It tells us, for example, if this is the mean, this distance right here is one standard deviation away from the mean. One, mean minus the D. D stands for standard deviation. And D stands for the standard deviation. M stands for the mean. And this right here, this distance is mean plus the standard deviation, one standard deviation away from the mean. And what we observe in the nature is that, first of all, it will begin to take the shape. Not only it's going to begin to take the shape, but you'll find that most cases, two-thirds of the observations, approximately two-thirds of the observations, approximately two-thirds of the observations are going to fall within this range. In other words, in other words, why don't we talk, instead, of, instead of talking arbitrarily, why don't we use the numbers that are given in the book? We're looking at example four point example four point two point nine. In example four point two point nine, they tell us that the mean is thirty two. Mean is thirty two. As a matter of fact, in the book they tell you something else. They tell you thirty point thirty two point five, and they tell you the standard deviation is seven point one. I'm going to make it simpler so that we can handle it quickly and, and simpler calculation. We're going to pretend that the mean is 32, not 32.5, and the standard deviation is exactly 7, not 7.1. So the numbers that we'll get on the blackboard are going to be a little bit different than what you find in the book, but the same idea. So the standard deviation here is 7, and the mean is 32. So if you go one standard deviation away from it, 32 minus 7, 32 minus 7, 32 minus 7 is going to be 25. And 32 plus 7, 32 plus 7 is going to be 39. What does these two numbers? So what does this standard deviation tell us? Going one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, what it tells us is that if you give an exam or whatever, if, or if you collect large enough data for anything, height of the students, uh, the rainfall if you like, or, or, or uh, size of an animal if you, if you, if you pick thousand, thousand, uh, th thousand tigers or thousand uh, 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 dogs or whatever, oh, forgive, you get the idea. Most natural phenomena observe this, oh, observe this, uh, this notion of, stand, of, of normal distribution. What do these numbers tell us? It tells us that if you give an exam to a large enough body, and if the average was 32, if the average score was 32, for example in this case, we have 600 applicants. By the time you get to 600, and if you plot a histogram of 600 applicants, it will begin to take the shape. It will begin. It will happen by itself. It will happen by itself. So if the average score was 32, and if you calculate the standard deviation, and it turns out the standard deviation is 7, what you just told me is that almost two-thirds of the population, almost two-thirds of the application, here we have 600 applications, almost 400 applications are going to score between 25 and 39. Let's go one more, one more standard deviation on either side. And now we are up to, this was 39, 39 plus 7, 39 plus 7, or 39 plus 14 if you like, because it's two standard deviation, because it's mean plus two standard deviation. 39 plus 14, 39 plus 10 would have been 49, 49 and 53, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. That's not what I have in my note. 39 plus 7. 39 plus 7, not because this we are already up to 39, it's not 14. If you wanted 14, it should have been 32. Because you see mean plus 2 deviation, the mean is 32. That's why it was wrong. 32 plus 14, 32 plus 10 would have been 42, so it's 46. 
46 and here we go 7, 7 lower than that it's going to be 18 and that's mean minus 2 standard deviation so by the time we get to, let me change the color by the time we get to this far by the time we get to this far out this distribution that you see here from here to here we have captured 95% of the population approximately 95% of the population so if you have if you have so if you have 60, 600 applicants if you go walk up to somebody I'm looking at the book at the same time if, if you walk up to somebody and tell the person that we just gave this exam to 600 applicant the average score was 32 and standard deviation was 7 and that's it that's all you tell them well you have told me a lot what you told me is that almost two-thirds of the applicants are going to score between 25 and 39 I also know that almost everybody almost everybody 95% of the students 95% of the people are going to score between between 18 and 46 between 18 and 46 I don't know why my notes said 45 if you add 7 to it 7 is an odd number you see 7 is an odd number and yet 32 plus 14 those are both even Seven is an odd number, and if you add odd numbers to odd numbers, it's even number. That is correct. My notes are wrong. It should be 46. So 95% of the people are going to score between these two range, between 18 and 46. If you go one more deviation, one more standard deviation, by the time you get to third standard deviation, you have captured virtually everybody. 99% of the observation are going to fall within three standard deviation. I don't know if I actually show you the three standard deviation or not. And now, I was going to look it up, but let's forget about it. Now what we're going to do is put in some precise number. Instead of saying two-third, instead of saying two-third of the observation fall between here and here, between here and here, what, we, what we're going to put in some precise number. From here to here, we're going to capture, it says two-third, and actually it is 68%. Half of 68 is 34. 34%, another 34% is 60. So we have 68. And then this is 96. This is this is approximately 95. I said, but it's actually 96. So if you subtract six. If you subtract 68 from 96, listen carefully. If you subtract 68 from 96. 16 minus 8 is 8, and 8 minus 6 is 1. 8 minus 8 minus 6 is 2, not 1. 8 minus 6 is. So that's remaining 28 percent. Remaining 28 percent, which means, which means that this. From here to here is 14% and from here to here is another 14%. And one more time, if you add up all this thing, 14%, 14%, 34%, 34%, 34 plus 34 is 68, and 68 plus 28, 68 plus 28, 68 plus 28 is 96%. In other words, you have captured 96% of the observations by the time you go from 18 to 46. This is based on the problem that we are about to do. Let's answer the question. Let's answer the question. I'm not going to, even though I, we, I have taken up a lot of room here, but we need it, so we're going to leave it there. We're going to work through in this limited space. Let's answer all the questions there that are there. Number one. So again, I'm, I'm not going to read the question to you verbatim, but the, the, the gist of the question is, and you should read it yourself, it says that we had 600 applicants. They were given an exam. And the score, the range of the score was 1 through 50. You can score as low as 1 point or as high as 50 points. What kind of exam it was or to whom it was given, that's not really our concern. Uh, it was some exam. The average score, we were told, was 32. We were told that the average score was 32. And we were told that the standard deviation was 7. There we go. Average score was 32. And the standard deviation was 7, which is why we're getting 32 minus 7, 32 plus 7, 32 plus 14, 32 minus 14. And that's what we are given. One more time, 600 applicants. Let's answer the questions. The first question is, how many standard deviations, how many standard deviations above or below the mean is the rating of, I'm not going to write all of that down, you have the book in there. It says, I'm going to read it to you, because we have no room there to write. Actually, if we can erase stuff, we can write it down. Four point two point nine. I changed my mind. I don't want to erase it. I'm 
I'm just going to read it to you. It says, how many standard deviations above or below the mean is the rating of 48? 48. Well, let's see what we can do. Rating of 48. Well, here is the mean plus, let's just take K standard deviation. Whatever the value of K happens to be is the observed value. Is the observed value. Observed value. For example, for example, here the mean is 32, and if you want to go one standard deviation, one k being one here, if you want to go one standard deviation from the from the thing, you're going to observe the value of 39. The mean is 32. If you want to go two standard deviation below it, if you want to go two below minus being, we're going two standard deviation below the mean. K here being how many standard how many standard deviation above or below the mean you are, and here the k is two negative two, and then you'll have 32 minus 14, you're going to end up at 18. Do you understand? We want to find out this value for k here. What is the value? How many standard deviation do we have here? How many standard deviation above the mean is 48? We know it's above the mean. We know it's above the mean because mean is 32 and we are at 48. So if somebody scored a 48 on this exam, how many standard deviation above the mean are there? And it's going to be quite a few because 50 is the highest you can get. Let's find out, shall we? So k is our unknown. Observed value is 48. Observed value is 48. The mean is 32. k is what we want to find out. And standard deviation is 7. 1. Subtract 32 from both sides and we're going to end up with 7k equals 32 minus 48. Or rather 48 minus 32. 48 minus 30 would have been 18, so it's going to be 16. 7k equals 16, and k equals 16 over 7. 16 over 7, which is same as 2 and 2 7. 2 and 2 7. And we know that 1 7 is approximately 0.14. And if you don't know it, you should know it by heart. I just remember it. I have, I have a mnemonic device. I have a trick here to memorize, to tell myself. I see a 7, this multiply 7 by 2 and we get 14. That's how I remember it. 1.7 is approximately, 1 point, approximately 0.14. Here we have 2 7, so it's going to be approximately 2.28. There you go. It is 2.28 standard deviation above the mean. The score of 48 is 2.28 above the mean. What about a score of 30? Well, a score of 30 it's going to be below the mean, but just a little bit below the mean because it's 30, mean, is, mean is 32, it's just going to be a few standard deviations below it. How many standard deviations below? Let's find out. So we have mean is 32, and this is going to be 30 now. Nothing is going to change. This is going to be 30. And instead of 48 here, it's going to be 30. And here we can have negative 2. And instead of 16 over 7, it's just going to be negative negative 2 7 which is approximately point from the negative negative 0.28 just as before 1 7 is 0.14 it stands to reason that 2 7 must be twice as much 0.28 let's do the next one a rating of 20 so that was part we just did part b part b was there's a rating of 30 let's do part c part c we have a rating of 20. Again, nothing is going to change. We're just going to put a 20 here. 20 here. 20 minus 32. 20 minus 32 is going to give us negative 12. And negative 12 is going to be negative 1 and 5 7. Negative 1 and 5 7. Since 1 7 is 0.14, think of this as 14. If 1 7 is equal to 0.14, 5 7 is going to be 5 times the amount of this. 5 times 14 is 7. So approximately 1.7. 1.7. A score of a score of 20 is approximately 1.7 standard deviation below the mean. Approximately 1.7 standard deviation below the mean. Let me take a quick look at it as to what they're asking here. And that's all they're asking. They're in the, in the book. Listen very carefully. In the book, they only have three parts. A, B, and C. That's it. What we're going to do from this point on is not in the book. Don't try to find it. This is not in the book. So here's the next question. 
Here's the next, we're done with this thing. Here's the next question. Part D, it's not in the book. What is the minimum score? What is the minimum score required to be in the top at the top two percentile? I want to know what kind of score should I get? I know I'm about to take an exam. The lowest I can get is zero. The highest I can get is 50. That's the scale from zero to 50. But I want to do so well that I want to be in the top two percentile. I want to make sure that when I take the exam, my score is such that I leave behind 98% of my colleagues. 98% of people should score be below me. Question is, what should I get? Well, the answer is right here. The answer is right here. 14 plus 14 is 28, we just talked about it, 14 plus 14 is 20, 14 plus 14, which are two standard deviations away from the mean, that's 28, and this is 68, this is 68, 34 and 34, 68, that's 96, well if that's 96, what do we have in this tail, these are called tail, this tail right here, and that tail right here, each of these tail should have 2%, each of these tails should have 2%. 2% the observation fall two standard deviation below the mean and only 2% the observation fall above the mean. Well, there is your answer. If I want to be in the top 2 percentile, I need to score right here. Two standard deviation above the mean. Two standard deviation above the mean. Mean is 32. I must score two standard deviation above the, above the, above the mean and the standard deviation here was 7. I was about to write 14, but it's 7, which is where we get 14 from, 2 times 7. There you go, 32 plus 14, 32 plus 14, 32 plus 10 is 42, so it's 46. Of course, we're going to have to get a very high score. The perfect score is 50, but because it's going to be, it's going to be a normal distribution, so even before we take the exam, I know that the score of 46 to suffice will be good enough to put me in the top 2 percentile. Do you understand? A score of 46 would put me in the top 2 percentile. On the other hand, if I decide that I want to be a big fat dummy and I want to be in the bottom 2 percentile, if I want to be in the bottom 2 percentile, then I need to simply score 32 minus 14. 32 minus 10 is 22. 22 and other, I need to score 18. I don't know why I'm doing the calculation, it's right here. A score of 18 would put me in the bottom 2 percentile. 98 percent of the people 98% of the people who take the exam will score above 18. How do we know that? We know it because that's just the way the universe is. This is how the universe was created. Let's look at part E. Let's look at part E. Again, it's not in the book as I, as I keep reminding you. I should have raised the 38 from a long time ago. It had no meaning in the context. Almost two-thirds of the people, part E. Almost two thirds of the of the class of the class. I left out the article. That's okay. Scored between what two values? The answer is almost two thirds of the class scored between what values? The answer is almost two thirds of the class scored between the mean and one standard deviation. One standard deviation. Even though we know it's 68 percent, but we are saying approximately two thirds. There you go. In other words, in other words, 32 minus seven to 32 plus seven. We just discussed it right here. Almost six, almost two thirds of the students in this exam, even though the exam is not even given yet. But 600 people that are going to take the exam, it is going to have a normal distribution. Most phenomena in nature do have normal distribution. And therefore, we can predict ahead of time, even before the exam is given, that two... Well, actually, that's tough because we don't know the average. So we can't talk about the precise number. Here's what we can say. Even before the exam is given, we can't give the precise scores because we don't know the average. But we can say that two-thirds of the students are going to score between one standard deviation below the mean 
and one standard deviation above the mean. Now here, because we know the average, we know it's 32, therefore we can say that it's going to be between 25 to 39. Two thirds of people are going to fall in that range. That was part E. The question was, two thirds of the students are going to score between what two values? The answer is between 25 and 39. Let's move on to part F. Again, it is not in the book. If you were to pick one student at random, If we were to pick one student at random, what are the odds? What are the odds that he scored? at least 50%. One more time. So here the question is, if you were to pick one student at random out of the 600 students, what are the odds the student that you picked scored at least, at least 50%? Well, we know the score is from 0 to 50. We know the score is from 0 to 50. That's the scale. That's the scale. We want to find score 50%, 50% obviously is 25. So the question is essentially asking, what are the odds that the students that you picked at random will have a score of at least 25? What are the odds, if you were to pick, if you were to pick one student at random, what are the odds that he scored at least 25? Instead of saying 50%, at least 25. Well, how can we find the answer to that question? Again, from looking at here, look, right, it's right here. At least 25 means it can be 25 or above. Well, right here, right here is the, is, 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 the, is the half of this. That's 50%. If you add up 2, 14, and 32, that's 50%. So that's that's 50% right there. That's from 50% of the class. 50% of the class is going to score above 32. 50% is going to score above. 32. Other 14% right here, other 14% right here, follow my follow my stick here, is, other 14% is going to score between 18 and 25, or rather between 25, oh, so we have done half of it here, we are right here, above 32, right here, above, this is 32, that's the mean, 50% are going to score above it, that's the half of it, and the score of 25 is right here. We need to include that 50% and this portion right here. I don't want to mark it here, but in this portion we have 34. 34% are going to score between between 25 and 32. There you go. One more time. 34% are going to score, follow my stick here, this is 25. 34% are going to score between 25 and 32, right here, 34. And the remaining 50% is going to score above it. And there is your answer. Question was, question was, how likely is it that if I were to pick a student at random in the exam where the average score was 32 and the standard deviation was 7, what are the odds that the student that I pick at random will have scored at least 25 in the exam? The answer is, it's a very good chance. It's 84 percent chance. 84% probability the student, that the student picked at random will have a score of at least 25 given the fact that the class average was 32 and the standard deviation was 7. Do you understand? Let's do one more. That was part F. Let's do part G. I don't know how long the video is, but since I did the work, I don't want to let it go to waste. So we're going to do all of them. Part G. Oh, I shouldn't have raised all of this thing. What are the odds? Again, I'm not going to write everything because it was already written there. What, again, I'm going to say the question to you, read, read the question to you. What are the odds that if you were to pick one student at random, what are the odds that that student has scored, has scored between 18 and 39? 
between 18 and 39. How do you find that? Can you find it here? Between 18 and 39? Let's take a look at it. Where is 18? 18 is right here. Between 18 and 39. Okay, follow my stick. Between 18 and 39, right here. Between 18 and between 18 and 25 is 14 percent. Between 18 and between 18 and 25 is 14 percent. Between 18 and 25 is 14 percent. And then from from 25 to 39, because that's what we want. We want to go all the way to 39. Instead of doing it in sequence in bits and pieces, let's go from 20, 25 to 39. From 25 to 39, we capture this part right here, the 68 percent. From 25 to 39, from 25 to 32, we'll capture, we'll capture 34 percent, and then from 32 to 39, we'll capture all the 34 percent, 68 percent. Two, carry one. Oh, there you go. Very similar answer to the previous question. Uh, the answer is 82%. This is how they ask the question. They will give you standard normal distribution. They will tell you the 600 students to, took the exam. The standard deviation, they actually don't, they, they don't even have to give you the plot of the standard normal distribution. You simply have to understand what normal distribution is. They simply, so here's the question. 600 students took the exam. The score, the score on this exam were normally distributed with the mean of 32 and a standard deviation of seven. What are the odds that the student picked at random We'll have, a we'll have a score between 18 and 39. Between 18 and 39, the answer is 82%. Or they can rephrase the question. Let's do it again. Or, here's a, here's a new question. Okay. Here's, 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 a, here's a question. Approx approximately, approximately, how many, this is actually I had, this is the way I had it in my notes and I wasn't paying attention. Approximately how many is scored between 18 and 39. And here are the answer choices. A, B, C, D, and E. Now it's beginning to look like 420, 450, 470, and 500. Now it begins to look like the exam question on the real exam. So here's what the they tell you that the exam was given where the scores were normally distributed with the mean of 7, or rather with the mean of 32 and a standard deviation of 7. How many students approximately scored between 18 and 39? So in order to answer this question, we first have to do the work that we just did before, a second ago, and we know it's 82 percent odds, 82 percent odds, and we know that 600 people took the exam. So we have to figure out 82 percent of 600. We have to figure out 82% of 600. 82% of 600. Let's do it here. 82, 82 times 6. 6 to the 12, 2, carry 1. 4, 8, 6 is the 48, plus 1 is 49. It looks like 498, approximately 492 rather. 492 students. 492 students will have scored between 18 and 39. And we, our job now is to pick an answer choice that comes closest to 492. 492, 470 is too far away. The closest one is 500. It's a difference of only 8. Or else the other way, the difference is more than 8. So the answer here is approximately 500 students, approximately 500 students out of the 600 students who took the exam will score between 18 and 39. But in order to answer this question, we first have to figure out the probability, the percentage that we just did a little while ago. That we did a little while ago. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Approximately how many students will have scored between between 32 and 46? Between 32 and 46. 32 and 46. These answers no longer apply. So let's figure out between 30, between 36. This is H between 32 and 46. 32 is right here and 46 is right here. Do you see that? 32 to 46. We have to add up this 34% and this 14%. That's what it is. 34% will score between 32 and 39. 34% will score between 32 and 39. And then from 39 to 46, from 39 to 46 is 14%. 
there you go. Eight, there you go. 48%, approximately half the students. Approximately half the students. Again, if it were multiple choice questions with different answers, one of the answer choices will simply say 300 because that's approximately half of 600. That's all. Finally, part I. Then we're done with this thing. Part I. The last part, which is not really a question, it is just something I'm going to put in the blackboard just, just to make it salient so that we understand it and remember it. Salient point, very salient point because it is symmetric. Half the observation fall below the mean, half the observation fall above the mean. Half the class, half the class scored below 32 and half the class scored above 32. How do we know it? Because it is normally distributed. It has a normal distribution. It has a normal distribution. I have no idea how long this video has been, but that was the discussion of normal distribution. A very, very important topic in the exam. They ask questions on that all the time. Tomorrow we'll do, we'll start a new topic, a topic of set theory. Set theory and Venn diagram. That's the next topic that you see there on page 299. Today is, today is day number 90. Listen very carefully. Today is day number 90. We'll do five videos from 91, 92, 93, 94 and 95. Day 95. We'll do five videos on the topic of Venn diagram and set theory. And each of those five videos will do two problems. We'll do 10 problems dealing with Venn diagrams starting from tomorrow for the next five days. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.